Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grow My Etsy Shop podcast. So if you haven't heard of a Dream 100, uh, that's okay. You don't need to have heard of a Dream 100, but it is a popular marketing technique used in online marketing. I don't think it's very popular in the Etsy space, but it should be because the principles transfer over perfectly. So imagine this. Imagine that every single person in the world has a podcast and has an audience based on who that person represents. So for example, imagine that um, Donald Trump <laughs> has a podcast. There's a, Donald Trump has a lot of followers and there is a specific type of person who's going to follow Donald Trump. Now imagine Tom Hanks has a podcast. Now there's a specific type of person who's going to follow Tom Hanks. Now imagine Jon Snow from Game of Thrones has a podcast. Now, there's a specific type of person who follows Jon Snow. You get what I'm saying here. Imagine every single person in this world has a podcast. I want you to take a piece of paper, take a pen, or at your laptop or on your phone, write down who you think, as an Etsy store owner, not you personally, but as an Etsy store owner, your audience is listening to. So, do you think your audience is the type of person who's going to be listening to Jon Snow's podcast? If not, Think about who would they be listening to? What type of person are they engaging with? Do they relate with? Do they spend their time wanting to be more like? Once you kind of go through that exercise, you then want to put on a different cap and think of it this way. You as an Etsy store owner, who do you want to be like? So your store, so more or less this is your competition. Or someone who's just very successful on Etsy. They may not sell your exact product, but they are successful on Etsy. Who do you want to be like? Who do you feel like, man, I would switch places with that person in a second. They just got it going on. I want to be like them. I love them. Go through and go ahead and start to write those names down. You should know those names. If not, take a second to go on Etsy and find those people. Find the people who are selling your products that are doing it better than you. And remember, they don't need to just be selling your products products. They could just be a store that you think is doing really well and has it all kind of figured out and system in place that you think, man, yeah, I would love to be like them. So take a second, think about those names, write them down, put them in a place that you know. The companies that I work at, we keep them in a spreadsheet and this is what we do. So we'll, we'll go through now. It's called Dream 100 because you're supposed to have 100 people. Not all of us are going to be in a niche or an industry that's going to legit have 100 people, but the the idea is you're supposed to really stretch yourself. You're not supposed to just take the five most obvious ones in front of you. You're supposed to take time and really research these, these two questions and really come up with a large list, even if it's like, well, you know, Yes, to a degree, this person I feel like is doing it better than me, but you know, there's so many butts connected to it. That's okay. Put them in your dream 100, put them on your list and you should get a list. The list should be over 40 for sure. You should have over 40 people on this list, preferably 100, the more the merrier. Now here is what your dream 100 represents. It represents inspiration for your audience and inspiration for you. Now in my example, I grabbed really big names like Donald Trump and, and Tom Hanks and whatnot. And the reason I was going really big is just so that I wasn't saying names that people didn't know. But your name shouldn't be Donald Trump. It should be people who have influence over the people you're marketing to. Okay. So here's a great example. I just, I usually, when I I start a podcast, I find something on Etsy that if I'm going to use an example, I'm going to use this company as an example. Um, So in this scenario, I'm looking at a store that makes doormats and they have sayings on them. Hey, cutie, come, come as you are. Doorbell broken, yell ding dong really loud and stale. You're better than pizza. Thankful. Oh, hello. Christmas. You know, like all these doormats that they make and they sell them somewhere between 40 to $50. So if we think about her and what she's selling, who does she want to get in front of? Who, where are her customers hanging out? Who does she want to be like? So let's talk about the, the, the number one. Where are her customers hanging out? So we know that she makes this home decor is what this would fall under, right? So are there influencers in the home decor environment? You betcha. (laughs) There are a lot. There are a lot of Instagram accounts that probably have significantly more Instagram followers than she does. And that's where her people are going to be. 
you know, there are going to be, I, for lack of people who, you know, don't have home decor, or aren't in the home decor niche, we don't need to necessarily go into a coaching call this scenario. But we would find those people, right? We would find those accounts that had those 50, 100, 200, 300K followers, and we would be putting those on our Dream 100 list. So once we, let's say we find 40 home decor that sell products, handmade products, and that have a good following. And we put those people down in our little spreadsheet or on our piece of paper. The next thing you want to do, this is kind of a weird one, but you want to go through every single marketing channel. So you'll say, all right, Instagram, how many followers does she have? Um, Facebook, how many likes does she have? In uh, LinkedIn, how many, if she's on LinkedIn, if she personally, so find the name of the, you know, the actual person. Are they on LinkedIn? How many people are following them on LinkedIn? YouTube, how many subscribers do they have on YouTube? And so on and so forth. And the reason that you're going through all of these channels is that you want to see where the A, they're putting the most effort, and B, if you were to work with this person, where would you want to work with them on? So, for example, if they have six LinkedIn followers and 50,000 Instagram followers, you probably want to try to work on that Instagram platform. But here's why you want to know them all. Because with 50,000 followers, you may not be heard. But with six LinkedIn followers, you may be heard. So let's talk about what we do. Once we have those 40 people, 50 people written down who we think our target audience is hanging out in front of, number one is you want to study them every day. So this is what we would do. This is what those who coach me tell me to do is that we should look at ourselves as social media content creators and not consumers, which means that our Etsy platform or our Etsy Instagram page needs to follow those on our Dream 100 list and not at Patsy and Uncle Bob and our friends. If <laughs> I threw in the friends part so we make sure I know what I'm talking about. We shouldn't be following just random people or our friends or whatever it may be because, yeah, sometimes I'm on my Etsy account and sometimes I'm on... No, 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 no. Your Etsy account is about growing your business. It's about getting inspiration. It's about getting in front of the right people. And so make sure your Etsy Instagram account is that. And on the back end, your personal account can be more freedom in there. So now that you have this list, what you want to do is be on set a time aside every day to be on Instagram to study. So you open up their stories. And if keep in mind, if you're following, let's say we've got the 40, 50, if you're following 50 people who your audience is intrigued with and you go through their stories every day, you watch their stories, you're seeing what they're doing and you're paying attention to what works. What am I connecting with? What's drawing my attention? What's what's captivating me and what isn't working? Oh, that, you know, I'm skipping through the stories right now. Why? Why am I skipping through the stories? Why am I moving through this? That's stuff that you want to take mental notes of because that's what you're going to, now, we, I don't ever teach to copy someone. You don't want to just copy someone, but you do want to model after what's working. There's no shame in modeling what's working. Look outside. Look at all the fast food drive throughs that are taking place. Are they all copying each other? Or did someone create a drive through I don't know who had the first drive through And other people modeled that to what they were doing. Modeling is different than copying. Modeling is okay and it's what you're supposed to do. So as you're going through those stories, you're going to start to see what's grabbing your attention, what's not grabbing your attention. As you start to go through your feed, the exact same process takes place. What is it that's working? What's grabbing my attention? What's grabbing my target audience attention? Look at their likes and their comments and whatnot to see what pictures and pain points and and copy that they're writing to kind of see how they in how they working with this audience. So this is going to do two major things. One, it's going to give you an idea of what's working. Which as we know, when we have our Instagram, we have our social media platforms and we're sitting there looking at our deciding what are we going to post? What pictures should I how should I take these pictures? Well, you're going to be getting literally every day hand-fed data of what's working. So that's what your mindset is. You're going through and you're kind of saying, what's working? How is this? Oh, this one got a lot of likes. This one grabbed my attention. This one didn't grab my attention. And it's going to help you not only create listings for your store, but and also help with your social media presence. The second thing it's going to do for you is it's going to help unfog the path ahead. I feel like a lot of Etsy store owners and content creators in general kind of just don't know what to post. 
And so being able to get inspiration and being able to model what's working is going to kind of open up a road in front of you so that you're going to feel confident as you're thinking about your social media, as you're starting to plan your social media, that you'll feel confident in what you can post and know how to get results from what you're posting. Okay, here's homework assignment number two that you're doing. Now, again, you should you should spend 15 to 20 minutes a day. It's not that much time going through your Instagram once you have your dream 100 and following this. So number one is go for the inspiration, find what's what's working, figure out what's standing out to you, go through their stories, what's working, what's not, what grabbed my attention, what didn't, so on and so forth. As you're doing that, the same time, you are also selecting 10 different people. Now, if your list is 40, so 50, maybe you should do five people a day. If your list is 100, it should be 10. It should be 10% of your list. Every day that you are going to like and comment on their stuff. So you see a a post, it's a doormat brand that you're following and they made this really great idea and it makes you laugh and you go like and you say, oh my gosh, I love this. This is brilliant. Love your love your stuff. Keep it going. Or you see a home decor piece that's a, a woman who does interior design and you say, you comment on her and you say, oh, this what you did to this room is fantastic. I have a kitchen that I'm trying to do and I just love this. I want to do, I would love to hire you. You know, that, those type of comments. And they're going to feel the need, especially if it's in a DM form or if it's coming on a video or a story where it kind of goes naturally into their DMs, they're going to feel a need to respond or they're definitely going to read it, you know, and see that this brand is commenting on their stuff. And as you go weeks and months of kind of rotating through this 10% of your list, you're going to be talking to a lot of the same people and they're going to become a little bit more familiar with who you are. So not only are you getting inspiration, Not only are you seeing what's working, not only are you learning what's working and getting a roadmap to what you can be doing, but you're also connecting and creating a relationship with those who are doing it better than you. And you're starting to become, to them, someone that they like. This person likes my stuff. They comment on my stuff. They say nice things. They're involved in my brand. They're doing, as you know, being a content creator is not easy. And so when people appreciate what you're doing, great, thank you. Now you could stop the Dream 100 process right there and just kind of hang out in that realm and it will be great for your for your business because you'll be learning all the techniques that you need to be doing to be successful surrounding yourself with successful people is going to help you be more successful realistically you could stop it right there and it's going to be beneficial but there's also the next level of dream 100 that can be very beneficial for you and we're going to be talking about that in the next episode thanks so much for listening